It's time for us to close the book on the 2021-2022 Orlando Magic season. We're going to go over what Jamal Mosley and Jeff Volman were able to accomplish and whether this Magic season was actually a success. Well, it, you, we'll, 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 we'll get to all that. Our final season recap episode of the year before we finally turn our attention fully over to the offseason and the NBA draft and a whole lot more. It's on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is May 25th, 2022. My name is Philip Rossman Reich. I'm the expert and site editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we, can, we conclude our season recap, our player evaluation series. We're going to take a look at the seasons that Jamal Mosley and Jeff Weltman put together, uh, what that means for the Orlando Magic's future, and yes, whether this season was a success for the Orlando Magic and accomplished what it needed to accomplish. We'll get to all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, whether we're your first listen of the day, whether you listen to us right when we upload, no matter when, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember to check out all the other great Locked On podcasts. Search for Locked On and the team you're looking for. There's no way around this. Um, it, it is extremely difficult to give a, a fair analysis and a fair evaluation of Jeff Waltman and Jamal Mosley simply because this season was not about the standard metric of success. Let's just be completely clear about that. We will talk about the wins and losses because they still matter to some extent, but whether the Magic were going to be successful or not this year was not dependent on their record. And as, you know, as, as, our good friends at the Sixth Man Show put it when I when I joined them last week um, at the NBA Draft Watch Party at the NBA Draft Lottery Watch Party. The Magic ended up winning the exact number of games they needed to win. Let's let's just let's just put it out there. The Magic have the number one overall pick. That's something that these kinds of seasons are for. And in that sense, yes, it was a success. We'll get to that at the end of this episode. But I want to start with what Jamal Mosley was able to accomplish this year. And why Jamal Mosley seems to have put this Magic team and this Magic rebuild in such a good place. It's not easy for a head coach in Jamal Mosley's position. These guys are all grinders. They want to win. Winning has to consume you. And that's why rebuilding teams always find it difficult to find a good coach. I said this at the beginning of the season. I still believe this. Steve Clifford would have been a great coach for this Orlando Magic team. He is all about player development. He's all about getting the most out of his guys. He's all about putting players in the absolute best position to win. If a young player doesn't do what he's told or doesn't play his role, he doesn't play. It's that simple. And it's not a crazy notion to have, even in a rebuilding team. But obviously, Steve Clifford didn't want the pain of rebuilding. He's already got this tag as a coach who only gets his team to the first round and no further. You can't blame the guy for trying to do a little bit more and trying to be a little bit more and going through a rebuild. It's always difficult. The coach that you hire at this stage of the rebuild is often not the coach that gets you to contention, whether it's Brett Brown in Philadelphia or, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know who Mark Jackson in golden state. It's tough to start from scratch, but it can be done. And really, the most consequential decision the Magic made all season was hiring Jamal Mosley. Jamal Mosley is go- was going to be the guy who set the tone for this entire franchise, who set the tone for this team and what they would try to do and who they would try to be, the kind of culture and identity that this group was going to build and be about. It's not easy to coach a team that isn't going to win a lot of games. 
It's not easy to keep a team focused on the long term when the short term gains are just not there, when the short term results are not there. It's not easy to keep a whole team bought in to a bigger picture, into their own development. It takes the right kind of players, it takes the right kind of people, it takes the right kind of coach getting everyone to buy and understand like if we keep going on this progression, if we keep getting better, we will reach our goals. The process over results is easy to say. But having a good process when the results aren't there is not easy. Now, this is the big warning about everything I'm going to say in this podcast. So much of the success that we're going to talk about for Jamal Mosley, for Jeff Weltman, is not about this season. There's a lot of work ahead for everybody. But Jamal Mosley deserves a lot of credit for what he was able to accomplish this year. The Orlando Magic finished here 19th in defensive rating, which for a team that was as bad as Orlando, the second worst record in the league, is pretty impressive. I remember I said on this podcast, one of my outside goals for this team was to finish flirting with the top half of the league in defensive rating. I thought they had the capability to do that. Jamal Mosley certainly came in with the defensive reputation to do that. Um, and the Magic fell short of that. But 19th is a really good spot, a really good place to be in uh, considering how poor the Magic were overall. And their defense certainly not helped by one of the worst offenses in the league. In the final quarter of the season after the All-Star break, the Magic ended up with the eighth best defense in the league. Not a huge difference in a raw number. The defense kind of stayed at the same raw number, about 112 points allowed per 100 possessions. But the Magic were better ranked around the league. Defense is always relative, and that's why offense is so important, and we're not going to ignore that. On top of this, so Jamal Mosley really did a good job establishing a defensive identity, and, and defense is the hardest thing to get people to buy into. That's the first thing you let go of when you're struggling, when you're not winning. And that was really the one thing that this Magic team hung its hat on, really committed to, and really did something with, and really built something. The beginnings of a good defense are all there. Offensively, yes, the Magic struggled. They don't have the offensive weapons. Um, I think Mosley's offense is a little bit too much freelance, not enough structure. But at, by the same token, though, it was more modern than we've seen in a long time. Obviously, three-point attempts are way up across the league. But the Magic still finished in the top 10 in three-point attempts per game this year. They took their fair share. They didn't make very many, but they took their fair share. They had the most corner three-pointers that they've taken since 2009. Most corner three-point attempts per game since 2009. It was the first time they ranked in the top half of the league or in the top 10 in the league. Uh, or It was the highest rank they had in three-point attempts, corner three-point attempts per game since like 20, since Dwight Howard left, I think. This is all to say, the Magic shot selection and the shot profile they were getting, well, maybe not the best shots and maybe um, certainly not making them, was more modern than it's ever been. The hallmarks of a modern offense, the Magic started to develop a little bit. And to me, that is a good sign, especially as they continue to add more talent, as they continue to get better. They are making a modern offense. What this is all to say then is Jamal Mosley, did a really good job strategically of making the Magic a modern team, of showing the Magic the way that they're going to play, the way that they're going to need to play to be successful. Now, did they execute that all the time? No. Is that set up, was doing it that way, was playing that way, set up for this team's success? Not this year, not in the short term. But this was always about the long-term picture. And in that sense, you've got to give Jeff Weltman his props too. Because even through all the losses, even through all the difficulty that this team had, Orlando stuck together. The vibes on this team were fantastic. Everybody was committed to each other. Everybody was playing hard through really the last, until the last two weeks of the season when the Magic, you know, just kind of threw in the towel to do what they did. This team really bought in and has bought into what they're trying to build. It says a lot to me. That Mo Bamba, who we all expect to be gone, 
really, really seemed like he wanted to stay and see this thing through. And that's going to be the biggest challenge now is with the new season, with some expectations to start winning and add to the win total, are the Magic going to be able to keep that bond together? Are they going to be able to kind of take that next step up? Look, I won't lie. Mosley was a rookie coach, and it showed in a lot of ways. Especially early on in the season, he made a lot of rotation errors and just didn't know how to manage, manage the team particularly well. And he got better at it as the season went on, but there are certainly rookie coaching mistakes made. His focus was on big big picture stuff, not necessarily winning basketball games night in and night out. At the, at the end of the day, Jamal Mosley is a player development coach at heart. That's what the Magic hired him to do, and that's really what he focused on more so than game-to-game strategy. And this is an area that Jamal Mosley is going to have to improve as the Magic get better. Like everything else, everything else on this team is just really, really young and really, really raw. But like, that's not what this season was about again. It's not about the wins and losses. It's about the way the team improved. And they did get better as the season went on. They found their identity. They found their way to play. And that helped take this team forward. That helped make this team better. And that is a step in the right direction. We'll talk a little bit about Jeff Weltman and how he helped set the table for the Orlando Magic coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our pals at Built Bar. Look, I love brownies. No shame in that. But you know what I love more? Brownie batter. Also, no shame in that. Sometimes you just want to eat half the batter just while you're making the brownies. It's not good for you, but it's just so delicious. What are you going to do? If you like brownie batter but don't want the guilt that comes with it, you're in luck because Built has a new creation, and this is better than ever. The brownie batter puff. You heard me right. This puff takes protein bars to a whole new level, and they're available right now on Built.com. If you haven't tried Built Puffs yet, they are these protein-infused marshmallows. creates a light, airy taste that goes with the chocolate of the Built Bar. It's delicious. Only 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and 7 grams of sugar. The brownie batter puffs are the perfect pick-me-up for any day. And all Built Buffs are covered in 1% real chocolate. That means that with Built, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. The brownie batter puffs will have you completely forgetting that you are eating a protein bar. So no need to pinch yourself. This is indeed real life. Go to built.com to get brownie batter puffs. Now go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. We want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic your first listen every day. Make sure to go check out the Locked On NBA Big Board. Host Raphael Barlow from NBA Draft Junkies and author of the NBA Big Board newsletter is joined by Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin, giving fans an in-depth look into the NBA Draft, Mock Draft, Player Rankings, and of course, Big Boards. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. So obviously, you know, I think Jamal Mosley had a really successful first year. Um, I, I, I really like the job he did. I think he's the right coach for this team. Uh, he did a really good job keeping everyone tied together, developing players. And, you know, I think the message that Mosley sent his team off with um, in the postgame presser after the Magic's last game against the Miami Heat, where he said, now the challenge is you have to level up. The challenge is everyone on the team has to level up. The same mission goes to Jamal Mosley. He has to level up. He has to improve where he uh, was certainly lacking at, from experience-wise as much as anything. Now there's a little bit of a pressure to win. The Magic are going to have some pressure to win next season. I don't think it's... Crazy pressure. I think the expectations are still going to be pretty moderate, but there's going to be pressure to win and start performing where it actually matters. On top of this, then, uh, we have Jeff Weltman, um, certainly a, a figure that has a little bit more criticism. But let's be real. This is Jeff Weltman's rebuild now. This is This was the first full season of a new rebuild, as much as some fans hate to say that, and I'm not dismissing that argument I think those fans that are frustrated, it's like, well, is it this the 12th year or the 10th year of a rebuild? Um, and I would say, you're, no, you're not wrong. The Magic do need to take some significant steps. They do need to, to satisfy those casual fans and understand that. But this is a fresh rebuild. It's easy to tear things down in this league. You can trade off anyone for whatever you want to get. It is much harder to rebuild. And there's a treadmill of mediocrity but there's also an abyss of terribleness or whatever you want to call it. Um, 
it's very, very easy to be in the lottery hamster wheel and never get out. Ask a lot of teams. Sacramento is there. Sacramento is still there. Minnesota was there for a long time. It's it can be very difficult to climb out. And the Magic, of course, are trying to do that. Um, it certainly became more difficult when they did not win the lottery last year. Obviously, they won the lottery this year, so all's good in the neighborhood. Um, but this season was going to be a challenge. Orlando hoped for sure, certainly, that they would be able to have that centerpiece player. And maybe to some extent when they when Jalen Suggs fell to them at five, they felt like they got it. But obviously that wasn't the case. Still the right pick, but obviously not the case. Orlando was still spending the season trying to figure out who they are and, more importantly, who they're going to be. Albeit in a season that was about doing what the Magic did last week, winning the NBA draft lottery. So the most, again, the most consequential decision that Jeff Altman made was hiring Jamal Mosley and, and, and bringing in a coach who was going to keep this team tied together, keep this team playing and pushing the right way. Obviously, it all worked out. Obviously, you know, to some, you know, again, maybe not obviously because the record's not there. Um, the Magic seem to have found that guy. And Jeff Wilman deserves a lot of credit for what Jamal Mosley, for hiring Jamal Mosley and kind of setting that stage. But again, it's not about last year. Now they got to move forward. Now they got to make the next step. Now they got to take the next step as a franchise, as a team, as an organization. There's a lot of criticism of, of Weltman. A lot of it, I think, is fair. A lot of it is, frankly, inconsequential. You know, the things that I would knock Weltman on for this season are, besides the kind of secrecy around Jonathan Isaac's injury and Marco Holtz's injury for most of the year, um, which, you know, again, whatever. Um, you know, trading for, you know, his two-way contract selections, pretty uninspiring. Um, you would like to see them maybe take a little bit of a swing or bring in players that they feel like could be part of this team moving forward. And instead they went with more sure things, whether it was Michael Mulder, Ignaz Brzezakis, uh, or Admiral Schofield. Those are pretty established players in this league. They knew exactly what they were getting. And yeah, they, they kind of knew they weren't getting NBA players. Give Jeff Waltman the credit where he deserves though. Devin Kennedy looked like a find. So give him that, give him the credit where it was due. Obviously Kennedy had to come back from the injury. The trade deadline certainly came and went without much action. Um, I think there's a, certainly a fair criticism, criticism to be made that that was the time to move Terrence Ross and that the asking price on Terrence Ross, if indeed the Magic were searching for a number one pick, was a bit too high. Perhaps. But I always tell people no deal is better than a bad deal and the Magic will get another crack at it this offseason and, and at, especially on draft night. So not going to kill you. Uh, what were the Magic doing when they acquired Bull Bull? Well, I don't have a good answer for that one either. It felt like a favor to Brad Stevens and the Boston Celtics to help them get under the cap. Um, perhaps they wanted to just see what Bull Bull was about and keep him around. Maybe the Magic do end up resigning him to a one-year deal or to a two-way deal this season, but I, 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 I don't have an answer for that one either. At the end of the day, those criticisms, though, are, are pretty inconsequential. What matters is the kind of environment that Weltman has started to set up for this team. Obviously, hiring Mosley is a big part of it. Um, you know, really focusing in on defensive players, drafting Franz Wagner, signing Wendell Carter to a front-loaded four-year $50 million extension, and having Wendell Carter really succeed the way that he succeeded this year. All just really solid moves, really savvy, good moves. As much as Magic fans want to criticize this, the way he managed Markel Fultz's injury this season was the right way. If you bring Fultz back too early, he doesn't hit the ground running the way that he hit the ground running. They made sure he was 110% ready to play, and obviously there are still some restrictions, but they checked every box to make sure Fultz was ready to play, and when he was ready to play, he played exceptionally well. And that you know goes gives is credit to the structure that Weltman put in place. Obviously, Isaac didn't hit those marks, and that part is disappointing. But you know if Fultz comes back the way he came back, the Magic are clearly waiting to have Isaac make the same effect. He can make an impact, play his game, you know, with some, with some restrictions just to make sure everything's okay, but can make that impact pretty quickly. And if he's not there, he's not there. Especially in a season like this, 
no reason to rush anybody. Um, again, in, in that sense, Weltman too had a really nice season. Uh, the first year of rebuilds are always hard. They often end exactly the way this season ended. And so the Magic did a good job filling the roster in with some nice veterans. Robin Lopez turned out to be a really solid guy to have around. Mo Wagner, I questioned that move a ton. It was absolutely the right move, and I expect Mo Wagner to be back on the team next year. Finding Devin Kennedy, drafting Franz Wagner, signing Wendell Carter. These were all really good moves for a team that's in this position. Now comes the challenge. Now comes the hard part. Taking this team to the next level. Weltman has the number one pick. He has to get this pick right. He has to make, maybe not the best pick that he could make, but he has to get an impact player for this franchise that will be part of the next playoff team. Part of the next championship contending team. He's got significant cap space, and how he uses that cap space is going to be significantly vital for this team. Whether it's punting it for next year, whether it's setting something up for a few years down the road, or whether it's being aggressive today and making this team significantly better. Weltman has to make good decisions. At the end of the day, that's all a GM can do. That's all an executive can do is make good decisions. If he does that, then the Magic will stay on track. But that's really the most important thing for this season is the Magic stayed on track. They didn't really deviate from what anyone expected. In some ways, they exceeded it. But there are still plenty of questions remaining as the Magic move forward. We'll get to those coming up here in just a moment. But first, our partners at Bet Online continue to be the, that's in all caps, number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, how do we evaluate this Orlando Magic season? How do we measure this year? How do we look at the season and determine if it was a success or not? We certainly can't look at wins and losses. 22 and 60 is not a good record, so in that sense it was a failure. But the Magic weren't expected to do much anyway. According to Vegas, they were just half under their over-under for the year. I think the over-under was set at 23 and a half or 22 and a half. So they, they played to expectation with such a young roster. With a young roster like this and all the injuries the team faced, you give allowance for some mistakes. If you listen to me, you know that I care about wins and losses. And in that sense, it is hard for me to call this season an unmitigated success. The, win, the record still is the record. As Dennis Green said, you're, you are what your record says you are. Um, you know, again, they are who we said they are. They are who we thought they were, whatever, whatever that quote is. Um, the Magic were one of the worst teams in the league. They earned the number one pick in this year's draft, or at least a top pick in this year's draft. They, they won the number one pick in this year's draft. And so in that sense, yes, the, the season was a bit of a failure. I, I, I think skeptics, and please be a skeptic. There's, there's no reason not to be a skeptic here. Um, skeptics will say, okay, any positive sign is somewhat illusory then because it didn't translate to winning. It didn't translate in the stat that matters most. I can tell you that I thought this team's defense got really good. I was really, really confident in the way this team played defense over the last quarter of the season, but that's just 21 games. That's just a quarter of the season. We can go back to the beginning of the season when teams typically play a lot better defensively. And the Magic really struggled. They had the worst defense in the league through the first quarter of the season. Even though they worked on their defense all training camp long, it didn't really click. Not really until probably late January, early February, maybe mid-February. It's a long time. There were a lot of losses, a lot of blowout losses, a lot of embarrassing blowout losses. 
that again, as I always say, say more about the losing team than they do about the winning team. The Magic, as good as they were defensively, still gave up 60 to Kyrie Irving. Still gave up 50 in three quarters to Joel, essentially three quarters, to Joel Embiid. You know, gave up a, what, 12 for 15 shooting performance early in the season to Kevin Durant. Those are elite players. Those are MVP caliber players. So maybe not the best judge, but they gave up 50 to Jalen Brown in an overtime loss they should not have lost. Those are elite players. Those are all-star players, and sometimes there's nothing you can do defensively, but those are still on their record. Those are still on their ledger. And so I think it's a fair question to ask, okay, what part of this team is real? The team that struggled at the beginning of the season, the team that played slightly better later in the season. And obviously the Magic had one of the worst offenses in the league, which is a big part of the whole story, one that we cannot dismiss. In the end, I think back to what my goals were for the Magic at the beginning of the season. My big goal, the goal that I hammered home every time I talked about this team in the offseason and even early in the season was, the only thing I want to see this year is the outline of who this team is going to be. Is a beginning, a beginning of understanding of how this team is going to play when they're ready to compete. And in that sense, I think I saw that. The way this team closed the season, the way their defense played for much of the last quarter of the season, inspired confidence in me that this team is building things the right way, is building the right thought process and the right understanding of how to push this team forward, of how to get to that next step, how to get to where they ultimately want to be. At the end of the day, there are all these positive signs. Franz Wagner played great. Wendell Carter played great. Markel Fultz played great. Cole Anthony had his moments. RJ Hampton had his moments. Jalen Suggs had his moments. Gary Harris was such a solid veteran. We want to bring him back. Um, There are all these little moments, but the big challenge is still ahead. Ultimately, nothing mattered this season. The only thing that mattered was what happened last Tuesday. The Magic won the lottery. Now they have the chance to really build and grow the way they want to build and grow. They have, you know, theoretically a player that they can build around, a player that they can begin to put pieces around to make better. That's not what this team was designed to do. Let's let's be real. This team, team was designed to lose. This team was designed to give young players bigger chances than they probably should have in order to figure out who to keep. And in that sense, we did see a little bit of an outline of what this team's going to be, but the work is still far ahead. So really the great, I mean, I get, I, I would give the magic overall a B minus. I would give Jamal Mosley a B plus and I would give Jeff Weltman a B. But really the grade to give here is an incomplete because we're still at such a beginning phase of things. And obviously now the, 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 the trick is to take the next step. What comes next is hardening that identity. What the next step is, is winning, being judged on your wins and losses, feeling that pressure of important games, the sting of losses, the ability to move on and put winning streaks together. This is the only team in Magic history that did not win three games in a row at any time in the season. That is concerning. There's a, no getting around it. As much as we expect this team to be bad, that is concerning. It's bad history. And ultimately, we won't know if this season was the beginning of something or the beginning of nothing until a little bit later on down the road. Next season, we can already begin to put some put some expectations down. We do expect this team to win a little bit more. I would say in the 30 range, some would say play in tournament. I don't think they need to be in the play in tournament quite yet, but we need to be making our way toward it. Um, that identity needs to become more crystal. And more importantly, for Jeff Waltman, the Magic need to figure out who they're actually going to build around and grow with. This season was a free season. Now comes the hard work of building a team. As I said before, it's easy to tear a team down. It's much harder to build it back up. 
I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me, uh, find us on Twitter at Locked on Magic. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Stitcher, tune in. Himley, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey. All the full places and all the podcasts to your podcast enabled listening device. You can find me on Twitter at R underscore OMD. And of course, for the Orlando, for, for the latest on the Orlando Magic, please sure check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can, follow, you can, of course, follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. Now that you're done listening to us, be sure to check out the Locked On NBA podcast from the first jump ball of the play-in tournament to the last possession of the finals. Locked On experts take you deep inside the playoffs with insight and analysis affecting all 30 teams. We'll be back again tomorrow with another episode of Locked On Magic. We'll talk more specifically about the NBA draft. Got a great episode playing for you tomorrow, so definitely tune in for that. Until next time, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Wright. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.